want to bring about a new world order of our choosing, a new world that we love and want to be part of, a new reality through seeing ourselves in a new light. I want all of us to see how we can look at ourselves as uniquely standing out instead of painfully not fitting in in our lives. Was I always this confident about uniquely standing out? No, I was not. Listen, the Mayans, the calendar has ended. It's time for a new paradigm. Let's roll. I was raised in Malibu, California with this hair and this pizzazz. So you can only imagine how I was born not fitting in or uniquely standing out. On top of it, I was the only Jew for miles. We were the only Jews in Malibu. My parents single-handedly founded our synagogue there. And I was, you know, I didn't want to sit around on the beach smoking a spliff around a campfire. I know that sounds fun. It just wasn't for me. I would have rather been in New York watching a Broadway show. It's in my DNA. What can I say? That's what I would have rather been, have been doing. I was born to do that. My parents created me. They wanted to stay in their crib in their beautiful paradise home where I didn't fit in. And obviously, the synagogue they founded was very reform, as you can see. <laughs> we were just traditional bagels and lox Jews. We weren't really that religious. I wasn't raised with a sense of a higher power or God or any of that. It was kind of just cultural and community, which was great. But for my sensitive soul, and I, I always wanted something deeper that I never found in Malibu, where name brands, superstars, beauty, fame, fortune, sex, drugs, and rock and roll were the higher powers. And to top it all off, I was raised on the standard American diet, the sad diet of refined white flours, sugar, dairy, meat, wheat, tons of poisons that totally messed me up emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. I felt completely out of place all the time. I didn't fit in, I didn't look like I fit in, I couldn't act like I fit in. Obviously, I became a comedian. Where else do you go, you know? I used to beg my parents to get me a Christmas tree. Like, please, can it, just at least a Hanukkah bush, anything. No, we're Jews, Abby, that's who we are. We don't do that, it's not our custom. You need to be proud of who you are. Well, it was kind of hard to be proud of who I was when my social life was being completely sacrificed at the hands of my religion. I couldn't go to Friday night volleyball and make out with all the guys behind the volleyball courts, not play volleyball, because I was Jewish and I had to stay home and light candles and drink grape juice while all my other friends were having a great, great old time. So I didn't, I didn't fit in in school. I didn't fit in in my community. I didn't fit in in society. And to top it all off, my parents were extremely high overachievers. My father is a very successful trial attorney and my mother is a doctor of English, PhD, professor at a college in Los Angeles. But um, so you could see how successful they are by how much effort they put into their Passover seders. <laughs> you can only imagine how good my dad is in trial. You know what I'm saying? So they, they were very successful, and I was comparing myself to them. And my pirouettes on stage, and my recycling causes, and my trying to save insects from my dad's bug suckers never amounted to what I thought was worthy in the world, like published dissertations and winning huge court cases. So obviously, as you can see, I stood out in my family as well. My parents were always very supportive of me. That was them watching me perform something. <laughs> so I, I never felt like I fit in. By the time I was eight years old, because of the billboards raising me and the society raising me and my parents in their way, not raising me the way that my spirit really needed to be raised to flourish, like none of our parents probably do, because we need to embrace our own selves at some point, I became exercise bulimic at age eight, full-blown bulimic by age 18. And uh, to support that, I went to the college that's known as the Barbie Empire. So that was helpful for my self-esteem, but that was good because the full-blown bulimia got me to a place where I needed help. I got help, I found therapy, I found Overeaters Anonymous, I found the 12 steps, got a sponsor, worked the program, I found meditation, yoga, community, Torah, my people. It, it was great, it was, it, was, it was a good fall <laughs> from grace. 
So I found everything I needed to support myself. I started reading Louise L. Hay, Wayne Dyer, and comedy, comedy. That got me through everything. Chelsea Handler, her books, Will Ferrell. I started doing that. And when I graduated from college and got my diploma, or as my dad likes to call it, his receipt, um, I asked, <laughs> I asked for a video camera so I could finally start filming The Abby Show, which was my dream. I did it, mom and dad. I did what you wanted me to do. I went to college. That's what you said I had to do. That was my formula. Get me the camera. Let's do this thing. Are you nuts, Abby? No daughter of mine is going to be a floozy actress waitress. No. You're going to find something stable with benefits and 401ks. What, I don't, still to this day, I think 401k is something to snort. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> yeah, so, so when you think logically, I was still completely lost after undergrad, what, what logically, uh, something stable with benefits, a real career, 401ks. I, I came up with Weather Girl, I don't know. I, that's where I went with it. So yeah, I went to Mississippi State, to get to, for their broadcast meteorology program. It was the only program in the nation that had a master's for broadcast meteorology. And I went to pursue my dreams of becoming a stable weather girl. So at least I got to perform and get a paycheck. But at the end of two years uh, after living in Mississippi and again, very uniquely standing out, and I wasn't famous for being on TV there. No, I was on local TV there. I had my own webcast there. No. I was well known for being the only Jew for five states. Again, once again, not, not fitting in. I'll say brilliantly standing out. They'd search my head for horns, it was hilarious, and I would just look at them and say, sweetie, I'm from LA. We have the best plastic surgeons in the world. We Jews get our horns removed way early on. Bat mitzvah means horn removal, okay? They bought it. It was crazy. So after, after yet another receipt for my dad, I came home, did not have any desire to send out my demo reels, had no desire to do 10 hours of research, scientific research, and five minutes of on-air time. I wanted it completely the other way around. 10 hours of performance and five minutes of research that my assistant could do, of course. So I went back to school. What else do you do when you're totally lost? I went back to school with the, the programming that I'd learned thus far. My parents told me that my passions wouldn't make me money. Society told me that if I stood out, I was um, a pariah. And the billboards told me that if I wanted to be accepted, I needed some surgery and, again, to make my hair straight and blonde. So that's, those are the messages that I came away from college with and um, went back to school because I was still so lost with that programming and got my teaching credential and started teaching. So the kids were my, were my audience by day and I eventually got on stage and started pursuing my stand-up comedy career at night. So, you know, I listened to my dad, I had the stable day job with the benefits and the 401k and I was doing my comedy at night. So that was good, that was a start. I was still living a lie. I was still not completely living my truth. I was teaching. I, I'm not a teacher in the classroom. I'm a teacher through comedy, through media. So from that place of inauthenticity and living not my truest life and not being my truest self, I, I prayed even harder. It was 10 years. I, I developed my own very successful life coaching, tutoring, teaching nutritional counseling practice to the elite in LA. It was wonderful. It was, it was successful. It was great. I was not fulfilled at all. It was not my fullest, my, my most authentic calling. So. I prayed even harder, I got even more connected to source. Please, please God, show me what I'm doing here. I need clarity, I am so lost, I am not a teacher, I don't know what I'm doing. And then when I had the biggest heartbreak of my life in the pit of it all, in the darkest night of the soul that I've ever experienced in about, it was a buildup of about four months of grief where I just was dead and couldn't function. I prayed even harder because I was so low that the only place left to go was up. And I went into a deep meditation one night and just asked so sincerely for clarity. And that night, I fell asleep and I woke, I, I had a vision for my show. And Jacob, the old school homie from the Bible, Jacob and the ladder, 
came to me and he said, see that ladder over there? And I said, yeah, Jacob, that's your ladder. The angels are flying, that's your ladder. No, that's, that's your ladder. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, that's your ladder. That's your ladder to God. And I said, what are you talking about? And he pointed his staff at the ladder and it floated apart in midair into three H's and in clouds it was written humor, healing, humanity. I have the chills. And I woke up at 4.30 in the morning after that powerful message. I got my journal on my side table, which every comedian has. I drew the ladder, I wrote my show's title, I slept for a few more hours, called all my clients the next day and gave them two weeks notice. And you can only imagine what my father said. Are you insane? You don't just dispense your business like that. Are you crazy? Unless you have something else lined up. If there's, and then he goes on with his platitudes. If there's anything your mother and I taught you in our home, it was don't quit one job until you have something else lined up. <laughs> really, dad, was that, was, that if any, was that the anything you taught me in your home? Because you and mom have both had your exact same careers your entire lives. So no, that lesson was never shown, never exemplified, and never taught. So I'm gonna listen to my vision, I'm gonna do it my way. And I learned that asking, you will receive, May, get, building up a practice, meditation, prayer, a group support, community, church, synagogue, temple, mosque, something, burning man, whatever brings you to life, landmark, find something, find community, find healing to heal all your old wounds so that you can actually be a vessel to receive the guidance and hear what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Because when we are living our true purposes and fully self-expressed, we will be doing the most good for this world and we will be the most fulfilled within ourselves. So the other lesson I learned was my parents are my litmus test do everything that they don't approve of and your life will flow magically. <laughs> that is the real lesson I came away with and my life has been flowing magically ever since. Balls are rolling, we're all here today. Thank you very much. So whatever you can overcome, do it. Find your way to your living your best self. I now have my show in production. Um, I'm, sta I'm using my humor to, to highlight causes that I believe in. I, I finally melded my comedy gifts with my passion for healing the world. I'm standing for replanting the rainforest. I'm standing for going vegan and getting healthy. I'm standing for healing children in foster homes who are being fed canned food every day and have mental issues because they're not being nourished. So whatever it is you stand for and whatever modality you're gonna use to live your truest life, find it, do it, come alive. As Howard Thurston says, what this world needs is more people who've come alive. So let's bring in the new paradigm. Let's look at ourselves as uniquely, brilliantly standing out instead of not fitting in. And let's do this thing. Show the world what you're made of.